What's up, enthusiasts? Welcome to another episode of Workbench Wednesday. Uh, this week we are going back to the soldered, new soldered flywheel cage and motors and all that stuff we were working on a few weeks ago. Uh, and, well, this is finished. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I intended to actually go through the entire process of the soldering and, and all of that with you on camera, but I made a realization, and that realization is... I don't want to be soldering without a mask or some kind of filter on because uh, breathing that smoke or that, that whatever it is in is not pleasant and I don't want to have a, like a 10 or 15 minute video of me sounding like this because, well, this, that, 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 that just isn't too pleasant sounding. I'm not sure you can even hear that well at all uh, when I had that mask on. So I went ahead and I started the cage. Let's go ahead and take this out really quick got our outer darts instant toe wheels with the containment cage 42 millimeters again and neo rhino motors now we got this all set up and actually uh you know what i had some help shortly after the last video went up where i was trying to uh get the wire separated to have that little portion in the middle out um, i got a message from nick rari actually and he did a quick little video for me on how he does it, which is how I ended up doing it. Um, if I can get some permission from him, actually, I'm going to put that up on the screen right now. So I saw your latest uh, video where you were struggling to try and pull the, the wire apart. And so I realized the mistake you were making is uh, you had your section of wire here. And what I believe you tried to do, because I just skimmed through it, was you broke the wire in half using your snippers and you're trying to pull it apart uh, but you got to realize that you have all this friction built up around the wire um, and the casing so the real way to do it is you actually make two marks just like such that are spaced out for the spacing you want and then you take a blade and then you slice between the two and you actually and you just pull uh, you just pull the wire off just by making that one little slot down it'll just peel right off and that is how you have the spacing between the two so that was a big help a big thank you to Nick actually for sending it my way a few others of you actually had the same uh, advice for me as well which is awesome thank you to all of you and the reasoning we go for that method is uh, well I kept working on that that piece of wire that I was trying to get up last time and this is what happened it just the cover came completely off once I applied enough force and and it well I wasn't able to get it where I wanted it using that method allows me to have these nice cut wires so I actually cut a fair number of them I got more off screen so I can just kind of go about my business with with my flywheel cages and get them all set up the way I want them to so these come in like this on the flywheel cage and um, I clip off the ends to go and attach to the motor terminals and once I do that I then take these other pieces cut off the edge cut off the edge and attach them here with heat wrap or heat shrink now important to note this heat shrink that which is great for like regular joins or joins to uh, a battery or wow a Dean's connector or XC60 connector they're great for that this size does not work for joining multiple 16 gauge wires together though it, it just it didn't quite work so I had to actually use some of the bigger stuff that was sent to me by uh, either containment crew or foam blast so that was a huge help I'm glad I had that on hand otherwise I would have been stuck um, so yeah the next the next setup I think is going to be this BSP cage I've got sitting around here, which I believe is a 42.5 millimeter setup. And then uh, let me grab the wheels that are going to go with this. And that is going to be the Bulldog wheels that I've had uh, that came from the uh, came from Tom of Foam Data Services. They're not his, but he had some that he sent me. These are from UK Nerf War. And I think these are really, these feel really nice. I cannot overstate how good they feel in my hand. They feel really well constructed and I'm very, very curious and excited to get these 
on a set of flywheels and try them out. It's probably going to go in another set of uh, Neo Rhinos or something similar to that because they are uh, 130 sized and this shell does not have a motor cover. And we're still working on the Fabu Strife. So that's probably just going to go on there. Um, what else were, were some of the issues we were running into? Ah, that's right. The other, one of the other major issues that I was running into, uh, we had a whole video of me trying to get this sorted. Uh, oh, these pieces are gonna fall out, so let's go ahead and take them out before they do. And that was trying to fit the battery, the Bolt, Bolt V2 into this battery tray. And I was having all kinds of problems with this. Uh, now, the good news, I found a way to do it. Uh, it it's, doesn't exactly allow you the most wiggle room, but basically, let me see if I remember this properly the first time. We are going to situate in the BSUK cover the flat end or the bottom end or whatever you want to call it of the battery in the small portion. Thankfully, it fits. It fits just barely. Uh, and we have our leads and all that. And this, we try to kind of bend in. Let me actually connect this really quick. So that's connected. And then what we do is we try and get the connection up in this spot right here, right above the battery. And the rest of the wires kind of fall into place. Um, oh, maybe if I wasn't doing this backwards, that would help. That might, might help. But basically, it, it takes a bit of work and a bit of adjusting and, and shifting wires, but eventually you'll get to about that point. And that's kind of where I've been able to get the battery to sit in and stay in place uh, for the duration of a war. Uh, again, it takes a bit, of, a bit of work, a bit of adjusting, a bit of messing around, but it does work. It doesn't... It doesn't inspire me with the most confidence. I'm gonna go through and actually, I think, clean out even more of this and try to make a little bit more space around the edges just because I want it to be, I want it to be good. But it has worked, so it can, you can get it to work, which is good news because that means I don't have to have a custom uh, battery cover extended tray or whatever uh, made for me to fit that, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much actually all I wanted to go over today uh, because I wanted to catch you all up to what, uh, where I was at rather in terms of this project. Now we left off with me having uh, issues with the wiring and then we jumped to this being finished, which uh, is kind of a bummer. I wish I could have done it on camera, but like I said, this is one of those things where I'm realizing I don't think I want to solder much on camera because I want to be able to talk with all of you while I'm doing so and the whole mask thing is not the most ideal situation. So uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you, what do you, uh, what, what do you think of the new combination I'm thinking of? Should I go with a different cage uh, for the Bulldog? Should I go with like a higher crush cage? Because this is only 42.5 if I recall correctly. Should I go 42, 41.5? Um, let me know. This cage, actually, before I forget, this cage is getting us around 135 FPS. I think 100, 130, 135 FPS on average is where we seem to be sitting with this setup, which is pretty good. Uh, pretty good. I'll take it. I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, it's It's been competitive. It worked well at the 5v5 game we had over the weekend, which I've got footage of that coming for you in the future that I'm excited about. And I had what? I had no jams at the 5v5 game. I had the one jam that was related to these wires, which was because of the way I put this in. You see, it actually pulled the tape I had sitting out here um, to hold the wires down, which I'm pretty sure I'll hot glue these wires down now that I've got things kind of situated where I want them. Um, so yeah, the cage has been performing really well. And in terms of feeling like there's issues with the motors being too light, I don't think they're too light or the, the flywheels being too light for uh, rapid rate of fire. I think they're just fine for semi-auto. If you want to fire qu uh, quick shots off in succession, I've been able to just go and have no issues. Uh, that said, I haven't run something like a rapid strike with it yet that's you know upwards of like 15 darts per second. I don't know about that. What I can tell you is the spin-up time. Oh, it's nice. 
It's so nice. I am very much a fan of these flywheels and I'm going to be ordering more. Uh, so that said, I'm going to leave this off here and I will catch you all next time. Let me know what you, uh, what you would like to see on one of these episodes of Workbench Wednesday where we, we go through the process of modding and I learn along with all of you so you can see all the mistakes I make, all the silly things I do, and understand that modding is a process. It's something we all learn and it's uh, it's just... You make mistakes, and that's how you learn from it. That's that's the beauty of it. You can always learn and always get better and always grow more. So that's going to do it, I think. Uh, leave your comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, yeah, I think I just messed up my outro. Yeah, I just messed up my... I totally flubbed that, but uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. If I didn't say anything, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Dangular. I'll see you next time.